Chris, get that cockroach. Look at that. Should we feed him? He is a stalking predator. Whoever predicts it right, shout out in the next video. Something lurking right here. Oh Lord. Man, you would think I'm sweating because of water changes, guys. I was just watching the most intense episode of Cops. Enough with the fooling around, guys. My name's Anthony from Unconventional Aquatics. I want to thank each and every one of you. We just smashed through 2,000 subscribers like it was a wall made out of a thin sheet of paper. So, today, guys, I got an awesome fish for you. In fact, I got my light up board here that's going to be washed out. So let's turn it off. The alien catfish. Make sure, hashtag IFG. If you didn't come from IFG, make sure you check my boy out. That is Evan's channel. Guys, must sub channel. Come on, let's be real. Must sub channel. He's got some crazy things going on. You are going to be introduced to a fish I bought that is insane looking. I never thought I would own this fish, but he is just insane looking and when I was over at the fish cave and I saw this dude sitting in the tank I had to buy it. So guys I have some crazy crazy news. The fish we're gonna check out today is actually in this aquarium right here. He is very hard to see from where you are sitting because he is a stalking predator. We're gonna feed him today. He feeds insane. He's so picky, guys. He'll only eat a specific food, and I'm going to show you what that is. But guys, there's huge things coming to the channel. We're going to go on a ride right now because we're about to go pick massive things up. These cichlids, my African cichlids, are going away. They're not leaving my possession, but they're leaving the 125. You probably have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the 125. All right guys, so I'm just waiting on my man Chris to get here. Chris is the one who donated the 75 gallon aquarium that we're now holding the Paku, as well as Mr. Sledge for freshwater fish creek. Mr. Sledge in the uh, 75 gallon. Just for the winter time while we're here, they'll have plenty of time to grow in that 75 gallon until I move back to Florida where I'm from. I want to show you guys something awesome. So I have this massive Vore Delight, guys, from Bakari, right? The carnivorous predator fish food. And I do got to say I'm pretty disappointed because none of my true predator fish will eat this. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've spoiled them their whole life and raised them on a silver spoon and they're eating, you know, blood worms and tilapia. But they won't eat. But every once in a while, I will drop this in for the African cichlids, because they love it. And I say every once in a while, because we have a mix of peacocks in here. Uh, most of these half are carnivorous fish, but others need some vegetables in their diet as well. So I only give this to them every once in a while, but I want to show you how crazy they go over this stuff. Let me get this in the angle. Look at them. They already know. They can like smell it, guys. It's, it's just insane. They can smell it. So I'm going to lift the lid up here ever so slightly and drop them in. Look at this guys. They go absolutely insane. They go absolutely insane. I do gotta say guys, the massive board does make a big mess in the tank. It definitely, you can tell when I feed. But you see everybody's enjoying it. The peacocks, the haps guys, all these peacocks and haps are in between four and the biggest here, the red empress at about six inches. Let's go, man. Let's go. Chris, always taking forever. He's always sleeping. All right, y'all. So our man Chris is here, and we are going to head out to Tractor Supply and uh, pick up two very awesome things. All right, guys. So here's our man Chris. Chris right there. All right, guys. Here's a sneak peek in the back of Chris's CRV. Look at this. Massive. Time to get this bad boy unloaded. All right, we gotta get the straps off. Get Chris's Chris's guns out of here. Look at this guy. You don't want to roll up on Chris, guys. You don't want to roll up on Chris. 
Should see what's inside that case. All right, guys, so let's get this massive tub out. It'd be nice if I had some help, but Chris decided that he just wanted to be the camera guy instead of helping me. Got to move his rocket launcher out of here and get this big monster. Oh, look, guys, it even comes with a free cockroach. Chris, get that cockroach. Look at that. A free cockroach. Look at that. Should we feed him? Should we use him as live food? And we picked up a new water change hose while we were there. Throw that in there. Check this out, guys. Ooh, 150 gallons with the drain plug. Oh. Two hundred and sixty pounds of raw horsepower. All right, guys. So we have that big container in the garage. We got to do some work in the garage, get that thing set up. But I'm telling you, it is going to be awesome. If you think you know what I'm doing with that, drop your predictions down below. Whoever predicts it right, shout out in the next video. But it shouldn't be hard to put two and two together. It's going to be a, a pretty, pretty cool project. So now it's time to take a look at this prehistoric alien predator. This awesome fish. I mean, this thing looks like something out of Jurassic Park. I, I just, I love it. I love it. Let's take a look at it. All right, guys. So here is the 60-gallon holding tank that used to be the rescue tank. As you know, I donated quite a few fish to the fish cave from their losses during the hurricane. There's a couple small peacock cichlids in here that are going to be moving here this week as well as that koi is going to be going back into the pond but you can probably already see something lurking right here let's get nice and close hopefully glare is not an issue look at this guys look at this that flat head take your predictions you probably already know all right so the predictions are in here we have a juvenile Lima shovel nose catfish. So guys, without getting too deep into it, the Lima shovel nose catfish looks very similar to the tiger shovel nose as far as body shapes and like that, and some various other catfish. One of the main differences with the Lima shovel nose catfish, guys, is you can keep this catfish in an aquarium for pretty much its whole life if you have the right size. Like say you had Maybe a six foot 125, eh, it would live most of its life in there. Um, but the average range is about 18 inches. So over a foot long, pretty big fish and they do get very thick. Here's an adult sized male Lima shovel nose. As you can see, pretty large fish. So guys, as you can see at around 18 inches, you can. there's a lot of different aquariums that could house a fish of this size that you could buy from a pet store, something that you wouldn't have to get custom made. That's the cool thing about a Lima, a Lima shovel nose catfish. It's a predator fish. It's considered a monster fish still um, and very aggressive eater. All right, guys, let's head on out here to my freezer. Get him some food. I'm just feeding him um, Hikari frozen blood worms. He is um, surprisingly for a catfish an extremely extremely picky eater all right guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and get one of the blood worm cubes out looks like it's almost time to refill already drop it in the tank i drop it right in front of the output of the canister filter that's on this and then i'm going to grab the camera and bring you in he's not immediately going to attack the chunk he waits for it to start breaking apart and then he's going to go crazy so i'm going to have a minute to be able to come back and switch the camera around so here's our blood worm cube Drop it in front of the intake. Let's get you guys over here. All right, I'm gonna get real close so you can watch all his actions once he realizes that there's food in the tank. The little cichlids are already up there, picking it apart. You can see, okay, he smells. He smells it. Here he goes. Oh, sorry guys. There we go, look at that. Very aggressive eater. Look how he eats. My goodness. 
and it's pure chaos like this, guys. I mean, he, he will just sit here and go back and forth and back and forth taking out these these blood worms like it's nobody's business. Here's a bunch coming down now, as you can see. So once he sees that, it's going to be game over. But he's going to go nuts. Look at that mouth. There we go. Look at that belly. He's already gotten a bunch. There he is, getting it from the top. There's a nice top down view. Look at this bad boy, guys. Such a cool looking fish, man. Here he is, guys, still on the hunt. You know, catfish have poor, pretty poor eyesight, so they rely heavily on their feelers. But um, he, I mean, he is going to town, to town. You can see that belly looking awesome. Look at him, front shot. Smile for the camera, buddy. Smile for the camera. Such a cool fish, guys. That's the Lima shovel nose catfish. You definitely got to check them out. They get big but they're manageable. So guys, that is the Lima shovel nose catfish. Guess what? I don't have a name for him yet. So drop your names down below. I'll pick the name with, let's see. Now we're not gonna do the name with the most likes. Let's just say, I'm gonna pick the name that I just feel suits his personality. Based off what you just thought, what is an awesome name for that Lima shovel nose catfish? Drop that down below. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, hook your boy up and smash that like button i would greatly greatly appreciate it if you want to see more make sure you subscribe and if you don't want to miss a thing which there's going to be some crazy things going on make sure you tap that notification bell so you never miss a video i appreciate your love and support guys your engagement even if you're hitting that dislike button i appreciate it because it's engagement and it helps me out still so thank you guys i hope you enjoyed it like i said i hope you're having a safe weekend thank you guys have a good one and i'll see you on the next video